now, no. Dr. Saxton from El Medina High School. Okay. For safety in numbers. President Ledesma, members of the board, Superintendent Christensen, boss, Dr. Hansen. <clears throat> um, uh, I'm Dustin Saxon, the principal of El Medina High School. This is uh, John, our um, architect. Uh, John and I have been working together now for a year and a half. And so- um, I think it's longer. It's longer. <laughs> it feels like longer, I'm sure, to John. Um, <clears throat> and so we're gonna sort of uh, um, present together. Um, so let's start with, <clears throat> this first slide is, um, I s uh, took this of our four, these. These four students are actually um, all choir students, and they're holding up for you awards that they received in San Diego at a company. First porous, um, second or third for second or third for So I'll <clears throat> just to demonstrate the excellence that goes on with the students in this district. Um, there's a lovely photo of myself. There's um, Mr. Dale and um, I don't know, you look really amused there, Mr. Dale. You, <laughs> you seem like a happy guy. And then there's Ian and Gary, our, um, our um, uh, construction management team. <clears throat> so what's happened at, at El Medina and also at the other three comprehensive high schools, um, as a result of, of um, uh, Carrie Torres and Dr. Hansen's um, program of instituting more AP courses and more students in those AP courses, we have increased massively our number of students in AP. Uh, we have 20 this year, 20 courses alone. We have uh, new, new courses for next year, including computer science, physics, uh, mechanical physics, and art history. Uh, and then in another year, we're gonna be adding in anatomy, physiology, uh, AP seminar, and then and, and an AP uh, capstone course. We had last year 112 students who were AP scholars, 56 with honors, 33 with distinction, and three national AP scholars. And what that means, the three national AP scholars, that means they took eight AP exams and scored a four or better. The 33 with distinction took six AP exams and scored a four or better. Um, and like Mr. Abercrombie mentioned, um, I actually, as he was getting um, a phone call from his, um, uh, not your wife, who's, who called you on the way? The, yeah, video his video production um, teacher <laughs> uh, to tell him that they won an award. I, I've received a letter just this morning from um, the college, uh, um, I'm sorry, the PSAT telling me that we had eight students out of 50,000 in the United States who are qualified to apply for National Merit Scholars. And to put that in perspective, of those 50,000 students, eight of them are at El Medina, 1.5 million students took that exam. Um, so I was very um, proud of those students. And then in the a AP Equity, like I mentioned, the EOS initiative, we have increased our enrollment by over 100 students. We have 200 tests taken over the last, we have increased 200 exams taken over the last two years. Uh, we have six special ed and five L LED students who are also enrolled in AP Equity. And last year, uh, we had five uh, National Merit Scholars. And to put- to Dr. Put, Saxton, yes, could I ask you what is EOS? Equal Opportunity Schools. It's a program designed to put more underrepresented students into AP classes. Thank you. And to put, to put our numbers in perspective for you, I just came back from a WASC visit at a school in Moreno Valley that has 3,200 students and only 700 in an AP class of any kind. And we have 2,200 at El Medina, and we have over 1,000 of those students in at least one AP course, and you saw the numbers at Villa Park. Um, this program's working, and, and uh, the students of Orange Unified are stepping up to the, to the plate. So what are our critical facilities needed as El Medina? And the principal of Villa Park couldn't be more right when she said it's a downhill slide. It's more like a cliff. <clears throat> um, facilities that don't support curriculum. We have inadequate access to the campus. We have restrooms that are non-compliant. We have aging, out-of-date classrooms with no, with inadequate lighting and electrical and ventilation. Portables are obsolete, and the structural and building and, and closure issues you'll see are, are leaking like a sieve. And then the utilities on underground are also uh, deteriorating over time. This is a, a photo that we want wanted to include. This is an AP. Um, U.S. or world history class, and you can see the the reason we included the photo is that 
the teacher gave up his desk so he could have more students in there. We could, in fact, put more students in there, but this is a portable classroom, and so it only supports 35 total. Um, and you can see it's packed, and every single section is packed, and with the EOS initiative, it's just going to become more so. Um, the CTE, Career and Technical Ed, at El Medina there are six pathways with 15 different areas of focus. We have 18 classes on our campus that are articulated with the local junior college, meaning that the students can achieve both college credit and high school credit for graduation. And that's not including the classes that SCC teaches on our campuses after school. These are the classes that are actually taught during the school day. And both of those avenues allow students to accumulate college credits without having to pay college tuition. Correct. It's completely free, and um, it's called the CAP program. This is our um, robotic uh, engineering a lab that was formerly a um, wood shop. Um, what you can see here is how this is our, our place like um, Mr. Surridge uh, talked about earlier tonight. This is where our robotics kids meet. This is also where they teach graphic design and they teach uh, art of animation. <clears throat> and I think on the next slide, well, let me go back. If you... See the upper right corner. Yeah, please. What you're trying... See the upper right corner? That's a gap between the wall and the ceiling. About a six-foot gap. And there's another class on the other side that's going on at the same time. So the students get to choose which teacher they'd like to listen to. <clears throat> if they want to do their teacher or the guy on the other side of the wall, either way, <clears throat> they're happy. Um, okay, the next slide. As you probably know, um, our film department, so to speak, our 12 kids who are in El Medina TV or 15 kids, they put together a video, they sent it to State Farm, it was voted and then we voted and we won uh, $100,000 from State Farm based on this, on this uh, PSA, public service announcement video. That's where the video was made right there. Um, the video lab, as we like to call it, has a couch and two iMacs. This is a um, CTE computer lab. This is the new coding. This is our teacher who teaches how to um, program. Uh, it's limited to 20 students because, frankly, that's all that will fit. Even though CTE provides us with 40 computers, uh, 20 of them remain in a box. Uh, inadequate access to the campus. Here are the stairs that lead up to the second floor. We have four major buildings, none of which have an elevator uh, except one, and it works off and on. Um, and when Mr. Abercrombie and I were assistant principals at Orange High School, um, under the fantastic leadership of Ernie Gonzalez back in the back there, um, we actually moved an entire class from the second floor to the first floor because there was no access for a student who had become um, needed, was on crutches. And so we had interrupted 75 students the ones on the bottom went to the top, and the top came to the bottom in order to accommodate the student who was uh, suddenly on crutches, not unlike Mr. Abercrombie himself. <laughs> um, inadequate access to the campus, and this is where I will turn it over to Mr. Dale. We skipped the video, I think. Oh, did we? Back to school night, I had a parent come in who said it is the same exact lab as when he was going to school. The electrical is a problem. We have a lot of extension cords for things that shouldn't be run on extension cords and we have um, wires that are coming from the center tables to the ceiling. It's really kind of unsafe. Like you never know when you're turning on something or you don't know which way to turn off something so you can accidentally turn on something and then you have gas coming through the room and if there was an electrical spark that's come off because one of our students has gotten electrocuted before, the whole classroom could go up into flames. It's quite outdated and it's and it should be improving steadily because as a nation we're improving along with technology and stuff, why shouldn't our labs be? They know that in districts surrounding Orange Unified, they have brand new science laboratories, and it's discouraging to them. I feel pretty cheated, because I'd like to have updated equipment, and that seems that 
um, that's not granted to us. We should have the same opportunity for educational advancement as all the other schools. Our goal is for all of our students to be prepared to move on to college if that is their choice or move into a career of their choice. And so having a facility like this would really help that. You want them to be excited about being in science and you want them to want to continue science. But it's hard when you're giving them equipment that is so old and trying to tell them that science and technology for the future and tell them that they're supposed to become the scientists of the future with old technology. Just to show you how old those science labs are, um, President Ledesma came and toured our campus two or three months ago, and not only did he say, that's the same etchings as when I went here, I think he actually did those etchings himself. <laughs> so I wanted to point that out. Thank you for showing us that, sir. <laughs>